Have you noticed the letters after your doctor's name? Have you wondered what they represent? The letters D.O. mean Doctor of Osteopathy. And behind them is a story of the years that shape a human life. The degree D.O. is not easily won. A career as a doctor of osteopathic medicine is a rewarding one. But the years of preparation are long and arduous. They are years of transition from youth to maturity. And years of work and study to obtain the knowledge and skills of a physician. Before a student may enter a college of osteopathic medicine, he must first spend from three to four years in a liberal arts college or university. Here he receives the foundation for his professional training through instruction in the biological sciences, in chemistry and physics. He is required to receive training in English too, for communication skills are important to the physician. He is expected and encouraged to study foreign languages and the social sciences such as history, economics, and sociology. Courses in psychology, religion, philosophy, and political economy are examples of fields of study recommended to the future doctor. A physician should have a broad and sympathetic understanding of all phases of human experience. He should be able to assume a position of leadership in his community. The preliminary training of a physician is so demanding that an increasing number of students find it advisable to complete a full four-year college course before entering their professional school. In recent years, more than 70% of the students entering colleges of osteopathic medicine have already earned a Bachelor of Arts or Bachelor of Science degree. Yes, three or four years is a long time to spend in preparatory training especially when there are from five to seven years more to follow in the professional program. It is costly, too. The average student who is aiming for a career as a doctor spends from five to seven thousand dollars on his education before he even enters his professional school. Colleges Chicago, Illinois. Missouri, Kansas City, Missouri, Professional Education and Colleges of the American Osteopathic Association and by other state and national accrediting agencies. The selection of students at osteopathic colleges requires great care. Each college screens a large field of applicants each year to select those best qualified for admission. Administrators consider it a matter of public trust to select those students who will get the most value from their training. Of necessity, only students who are potentially capable of rendering the greatest service to the public health can be admitted. Applicants whose grades were below the average in their class during pre-professional training are not considered suitable candidates. Yet scholarship alone does not give adequate measurement of an applicant's qualifications to become a physician. An appraisal is made of the applicant's health, character, motivation, and emotional stability. These characteristics are difficult to evaluate, but they are extremely important. The osteopathic college cannot overlook the fact that high as the cost of training is to the student, the college must spend thousands of dollars in addition. They must keep to a minimum the loss of students through ill health, mistaken interest, inadequate finances, and scholastic failure. They must prevent, if possible, the graduation of physicians who lack a high sense of responsibility to the public and to their profession. This requires an admissions program that is carefully planned and meticulously maintained. As a result of this screening, only about one out of every four applicants is accepted. More could be admitted, however, if facilities were available to accommodate more students. Many of the applicants who are not accepted actually meet or exceed the minimum standards for entrance. In view of the critical shortage of physicians, this is an alarming loss to the nation's health. 
The first two years of training are frequently called the basic science years because most of the student's time is spent in the study of the sciences, which are the foundation of the art of healing. Anatomy, bacteriology, pathology, pharmacology, biological chemistry, physiology, public health, osteopathic principles, physical diagnosis. These subjects include many subdivisions and represent a wide variety of courses. The laboratory becomes his home and his microscope an extension of his own eyes. Test tubes and Bunsen burners, pipettes and flasks become as familiar as knives and forks. And the complex systems of the human body as well known as the streets in his hometown. All of these subjects are taught from the viewpoint of the osteopathic concept of body unity, the interdependence of all parts of the body. The student learns that the unity of the body is maintained through the major channels of communication, the nervous system and the circulatory system. Through these communication systems, a disturbance in one part of the body inevitably affects to some degree all other parts. The student first learns to know the body as it should be in a state of health. Then he is taught the abnormal conditions arising from injury and disease. He learns the practical application of his basic science courses to the clinical problems he will face in his third and fourth years of training. During the junior and senior years, the courses and work are largely clinical in character, and the student spends much of his time in the clinic and hospital. Now he begins to learn by doing, and under careful supervision he gains his first experience in the personal relationship between doctor and patient. He is introduced to all the modern facilities for diagnosis and treatment and becomes expert in their use. He learns to evaluate the findings of the laboratories and to correlate them into an accurate picture of the health problems of the patient. But he has not escaped from his books nor his classroom and laboratory. He is constantly relating his clinical observations and experience to the basic science studies of the first two years and the clinical sciences he is now learning. The course of study during these years is broad and intensive. General osteopathic medicine, pharmacology, materia medica, obstetrics, gynecology, pediatrics, dermatology, endocrinology, these are but a few of the many subjects the clinical student must pursue. The fund of knowledge in the healing arts has been vastly increased by advances in science. And the student of today must cover far more material than was ever dreamed of a few years ago. Tropical medicine, parasitology, general surgery, orthopedic surgery, gastrointestinal diseases, cardiovascular diseases, thoracic diseases, all of these are broad subjects with many subdivisions. Psychiatry, neurology, anesthesiology, retinology, ophthalmology, differential diagnosis, comparative therapeutics. It is impossible to name them all, and each of them require many hours of practical experience in clinics, hospitals, and laboratories. Additional courses of study are required in colleges of osteopathic medicine for the principles and techniques which are distinctive to this profession. But the concept and philosophy of osteopathy permeates all of the studies throughout the entire educational program. The student of osteopathic medicine learns that the most important factor in the study of health and disease is man himself. He finds that the human body contains vast natural resources to combat and resist disease, and that the osteopathic physician is constantly concerned with liberating and developing these resources. The student learns that the bones and joints are not merely the framework of the body, and he learns that the muscles are more than supporting tissue or a means of achieving action or movement. He realizes that the musculoskeletal system is an important member of the whole family of functioning organ systems of the body. Like the respiratory system or the circulatory system, it affects or is affected by everything that happens in the body, in disease or in health. He becomes increasingly aware of the accessibility of the musculoskeletal system to manipulative therapy and the value of this kind of treatment to interrupt abnormal cycles of sensory and motor activity in the nervous systems and free the natural resources of the body to do their work of healing. 
He has taught the many diverse methods of applying manipulative therapy to all parts of the body and the specific conditions or circumstances which indicate their usefulness. Original scientific research is an important part of the program in the College of Osteopathic Medicine. It has four major objectives. To add to the store of knowledge about health and disease. To vitalize and enrich the educational process with new data. To develop and improve teaching and research personnel. To foster in the student a sound scientific attitude and a knowledge and appreciation of research methods and procedures. Students benefit with every step towards each of these objectives. Those who demonstrate a particular interest in research are encouraged to participate as laboratory assistants, and students frequently volunteer as subjects for investigation into clinical problems. The Bull Session is a time-honored institution among students. As they approach the end of their long undergraduate training, there are many discussions about future plans, where internships are to be taken, and whether to go into a specialty or general practice. The student is encouraged to spend at least a few years in general practice, even though he may intend to enter a special field. Experience in general practice is extremely valuable to the specialist. And besides, this policy helps fill the need for family physicians. It is interesting to learn that an increasing number of students graduating from the osteopathic colleges are choosing general practice as permanent careers. The importance of the specialist cannot be overemphasized because no single person can know all of modern medical science. However, our present doctor shortage is primarily a shortage of family physicians. And now the student is ready to receive his degree, DO, Doctor of Osteopathy. He is a doctor now, but he is not through with his training. He will spend another year and perhaps two years as an intern in a hospital. If he wishes to specialize in a particular branch of the healing arts, an additional two to five years of residency training are ahead of him. During the years of intern and residency training, the learning process of the young doctor reaches its climax. Here he becomes a responsible member of the healing profession. Under the guidance and direction of practicing physicians and surgeons, he must make important decisions in diagnosis and treatment. An increasing number of patients become his personal care and responsibility. Now he actually has begun his life of service to humanity. One step remains before he may open the doors of his own office. He must secure his license to practice. This is granted by the state in accordance with the laws governing the practice of the healing arts. The candidate for licensure must appear for examination before a state board of examiners to prove his knowledge and ability before the license is conferred. The years pass, but the education of a physician is a lifetime process. New knowledge and skill is gained by experience as he serves his community. The books and journals of his profession and the reports of medical research continue to broaden his horizons. The meetings and conventions of his professional organizations offer him professional programs and refresher courses, and the opportunity to share his own learning with his fellow physicians. This is the story of the letters D.O. that follow the doctor's name. Actually, it is the story of his life, and in a way, a part of your life as well. For it is through the service your doctor gives to you and to the community as a whole that his degree, D.O., achieves its full value and significance.